It's a danger zone. You in the middle of a world, only a banger home. Harley. Good morning, Harley. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Uh, I'm okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is ATM Ree with All Time Media. Our whole purpose is giving a voice out to the voiceless. You know? Oh, okay. Harley, <laughs> you know you're new to the channel and everything. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. yourself, your age, where you're from. Um, Give us a rundown. So, I'm 29. I'm from Upper Darby. Okay. Um, I've been out here probably for about four years now. Okay. Uh, I've been on drugs for like 12. Okay, on drugs for 12. Yeah. You say you're 29? Yeah. Right? Wow, so yeah. you've been on drugs for a little less than half your life. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. What's your drug of choice, Harley? Um, fentanyl. Fentanyl? Mm -hmm. Just the fentanyl and nothing Well, else? and crack. And crack? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, fentanyl haven't been around for 12 years, so... Oh, uh, well, heroin. Okay, so that's how everything started? All right, so yeah. let's take it back, though, Harley. How was your upbringing? How was it? How was Harley's life as a child? Uh, it was, it was good. I, I don't know. I was, a, I was a good kid. I was smart, and I was, I was very book smart. Mm -hmm. But I always like felt like something was missing. Yeah. So I, I started using drugs when I was like fourteen, fifteen. Okay. How's the household? Both parents in the house, or what? Um, yeah, um, so I had a mom and dad, but my dad had passed away when I was 15. Yeah. So, like, my mom was the only main, she still is the main parent. Yeah. Okay. Any gateway drugs before, the, you know, the more harder drugs? Like weed yeah. or? Yeah, um, perks and zannies. Okay. And that's what really got me started. How was you introduced to the pills? Like, what, how that came about? School? Uh, so, yeah, like, I was friends with, like, all, like, the people that were, like... Yeah, hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, on end, like, kids. But I always, like, was extreme. Yeah. So, Harley, when do you think everything started going downhill? I guess after my dad passed away, that's when... First and foremost, Harley, I want to say I'm sorry for your loss. Mm. How old was you with passing your uh, father? Fifteen. Fifteen years old. Yeah. Oh, that's a rough. That's a rough age for that to happen. Yeah. You know. So like I would, like try to like I didn't want to like deal with my feelings and I found drugs and that's what worked for me. Then well it didn't but I felt like it did. You didn't have no support after your, you know your father's passing you know like uncles. Uh, I mean it was there but I just didn't use it. How was your grades in school, Harley? I, uh, I was like, like distinguished honor roll. Like I was like very smart. Very smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was very smart. Very smart. You just had a lot of you know, personal things going on in your life. Yeah. At the same time. You yeah. Know? So how did yeah. you find Kensington? So when I started like switched over to heroin, I was dating this guy. Mm -hmm. And I would come down here, but I always stayed in the car, and he always would get out and get the drugs. Okay. But then, uh, fast forward to years later, I was started going to a methadone clinic, and some girl in my group said that they had better stuff down here for cheaper. Hmm. Wow. And so word of mouth, basically. And he was very observant with the guy yeah. he was dealing with. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And... How was your first trip out here? Was it alone? Like, like really, really out here? Like, um, did you go with a group of friends or? No, it, it, it was for like the beginning. It was like always me and this girl. Yeah. Like, okay, so you had a buddy tag along. Yeah. On. Okay. But she um, went away fit like quick. Like I think we only like hung it, like did it together, like came down here together for probably like. The first month. Yeah. But then. Y'all lost contact with each other. Not really contact, but like, you know, like this drug is, it changes people and sometimes it's better to be alone. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because yeah. you only got you only got one really thing in mind, and that's just to right. get so, high, right? Yeah. So friendship, it's hard to it's keep friendships. It's not really it's friendship. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to keep friendships in this lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people are out for themselves, and it is what it is. It is what it is. Harley, so how's your day-to-day -day out here in Kensington? You know, it could be treacherous at times, scary, um, you know? Yeah, so... Today was, it's been all right. That like last night it was like creepy because it's cold out, so like there's like nobody really on the streets right now. Yeah. So yeah, I think because it's at night, it do looks a little scary. Yeah. Do you have someone to lay your head, or, or are you homeless, or what's going um, on with you? No, I'm homeless. You are homeless? No, I mean I stay somewhere, but it's not home. No. Is it like somebody's? Room or um no no tent no it's like a uh, abandoned place oh a bando yeah okay that's what they call it a bando yeah 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 uh -oh. yeah have you been homeless for the four years you've been out here or um yeah pretty much yeah I know it's tough very yeah. tough yeah yeah and every time like I would get in like a little like situation where like it'd be like a room for rent like it always was some either weird strings attached or just the a scam <laughs> like it was, yeah. it was always like some extra Harley can we speak on the strings attached like is the landlord wanting something in return yeah or? like yeah shit like that what do they usually want in turn uh, like sex they want like free dates oh okay and like they think that um Wow, you offer guys are really their, playing these type of games? Like, yeah, like they offer their home and they think that, like, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, Especially yeah. in the wintertime, they get really creepy. They get really creepy, huh? Because they know it's cold, so they know, like, people are more... So they're really trying to take advantage of the of homeless the, yeah. for a sexual exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Speaking of sexual exchange, um, how you feel about the prostitution out here in Kazantin? Um, it's ter it's it's terrible, yeah. but I mean, yeah. I know it's a sensitive topic, yeah. but um, a lot of the women we interview, mm -hmm. um, they're involved with doing dates and stuff to make yeah. their money and stuff like that. Um, yeah. how are you making your money? At well, the I so that's what I I do dates also. Okay. I'm not a good thief, and I don't. When I beg, I'm not like I. Everything else is not for me. Yeah. So this is like, what I found is the easiest way for you to make your money. To yeah. Get by. Well, you wouldn't do it if you didn't have an addiction, right? No. Not no, at no. all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because different people we interview, some be like, okay, um, I can't do dates, but I can steal real good. And some people be like, I suck at stealing. So mm -hmm. I do dates. Then you got the ones that do everything that makes them money. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, I, I've tried every little hustle, but it, it's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you usually feel when you go on these dates with different men hopping in and out of their cars? Um, I try to be high. Yeah. Because I always try to be high, really, because I don't. I get scared that like, it's going to be a cop and then I'm going to be sick. Okay. So I try to make sure I'm at least well. Yeah. But, I mean, when I first came out here, I would have, like, really bad anxiety, and, like, it, it was a lot harder. But now I'm kind of, like, numb and, like, accustomed to it. Because you've been doing it for so long. Yeah, like. And then the drugs make you not. And that's, like, the main thing. Like, I know I'm going to be sick with that if I don't. So, like, I better make it work. <laughs> um, I heard about the bad date list. What's your impact on the bad date list? Uh, yeah, that, it's crazy because like I I never quite understood how like so like people are reporting bad dates and like if you read some of them like yeah like some of them are fucked up situations. Yeah. But like those same cars will still be out here driving around. Mm. So I don't understand like. Like, I, I obviously, you know about the bad date list. Obviously, the police task force, I'm sure, knows about it. Absolutely. But, but yeah. 
Do you think a lot of stuff get brushed under the word under the rug because of the circumstances a lot of you young women are in? Being yeah. homeless and addicted to drugs. Yeah. So a lot of people are careless about the situation. Yeah. I, and it, that hurts. Much. Because no matter what yeah. you guys are going through, y'all are still human beings and y'all are still women. Yeah. But the, the, I don't know. Out here it's different. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's like mm -hmm. um, third world country. It really is. Yeah. The neighborhood you grew up in, Harley, how was that neighborhood compared to here? Oh, there is nothing like this neighborhood. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's on like, um, the suburbs. It's, okay. It's, it's a nice neighborhood. So were you suburb living all your life until you came down here? Yeah. 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 Upper middle or I, I upper think class? Like, mid, like middle. Okay. Middle. Yeah. So it was definitely a culture okay. shock, but you definitely felt accustomed to what goes yeah. down out here. Yeah. Not it. And I, honestly, because I was on, I was already like in the streets before I came here. So oh, like, so you know I, about the streets and the yeah, drug activity so. and all of that stuff like that. Yeah, well, Harley, you know, I, Harley, you know, I have to ask. Um, was you being a, when you first came down here, new to Kensington? Were you being taken advantage of because you was new? Um, I had, I don't know, I had my like my guard up, so like I kind of okay. So you was already aware. Yeah. What this place could lead to. Yeah. Yeah. How much you think you mm -hmm. spend a day on your habit? The crack and the fentanyl? Probably like almost 200 300 dollars A day? Yeah. That's a lot of money, Harley. It's a lot, of, I know. People with good jobs not making that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard. It's yeah. Hard. So, if you only could purchase one habit, the fentanyl, the crack, which one would you buy first? I would have to get the dope because it's only the, phys cause the physical. And the dope is considered with the fetty. It's mixed yeah, with the fetty. yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Only because of the physical addiction. Yeah. All right. But I, I really would want the crack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you need the dope because the but, sickness side of it. Yeah. So you like the crack because the crack is more of an upper, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, the crack now, I don't even think, know what the fuck it is. Harley, a lot of people are getting trank wounds, holes in their body. Yeah. Nasty sores, open wounds. Yeah. Um, have you ever... Had to receive medical treatment or anything for um, holes and trank wounds and stuff like that. Not, not like, not in regards to like that severe of how bad. But I had like had to have like surgery because like they were under my skin. Yeah. They, but they weren't like the wounds like how. Like you wouldn't even know they were there. Yeah. Unless you get an ultrasound. Oh man, how you take your substance, Harley? Uh, yeah, smoke. IV. IV? Mm -hmm. IV user? Yeah. Yeah, you don't smoke at all, snort? I smoke the crack. Oh, you smoke the crack <laughs> and you... <coughs> and I shoot... <coughs> I shoot the dope. And you shoot the dope. Mm -hmm. Some people scared to shoot up, shoot up, man, and some I people know. rather. I wish Why I is would. that? Is it a rush or is it a... Um, I don't know. I've been doing it for so long now that I... It's like the only way I... You know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you lost friends to this lifestyle, Harley? Yeah. Close friends, loved ones. Mhm. Mm yeah. Have they passed away from the same substance that you currently use? Um. If yes, yeah, so, like a lot of our people, like friends. Yeah. Do you fear yeah. death at all? Um. Not. Not really. But I kind of just try not to think about it. You try not to think about it. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I feel as though it's like playing Russian roulette out here. Yeah. Because you never know which bag is going to be a bad bag. You know? Yeah. I guess because, like, my, like I, my body's so Your dependent body, on you're it not that, like, about I the outcome, basically. don't, I can't, not, I can't see myself overdosing only because I have such a reliance on it. So do you have regulars, Harley, or do um, you work yeah. corners and random men? No, I have up? regulars, and and they're all random strangers. How them guys treat you? What type of guys um, um, go on these dates with you? I mean, some of them, some of them are actually like are right, like decent people, but like a lot of them like are like. 
I don't know. They're fucking assholes, a lot of them. Like, they mistreat you sometimes? Not even that. Like, the, yeah, they, like, think, like, because they give you money, like, you're their, like... Their property? Their property or some shit. Yeah, like... That's not the case. You ever had a bad date and then he tried to pick you up again and you refused to get in the car with him because of yeah. experiences with him? Yeah, a few times. Yeah. yeah. Would, he, would he leave you alone or he just wouldn't leave you alone? Um... No, like there was like a, a a couple of them like they approached me like a few times like kind of like wanting to know what the problem was but that's because i don't think they remembered because they were so intoxicated oh man so these guys are getting drunk and stuff and then yeah but then woman yeah yeah so i try to stay away from like the tricks that like get high yeah have you ever get any really young guys? Yeah, I actually, I, yeah, but I don't really. I try not to meet the younger ones because they're the fuck. They're vi like they're. They're violent. Yeah, a lot of them are like. How young, per se? Like the twenty, twenty-one wow. year olds. Like, a lot of people think like dates are usually like old men in suits and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's not. all types of people. And it's a lot, actually a lot of people like that are my like I'm right 29 age. yeah like in their 20s early 30s. Do you judge them sometime? Like yo, why are y'all even out here? I know you gotta make your money and feed your addiction, but do you judge the men that that um, go out and get these dates with women? Yeah, I, I judge the ones that act like they're like better than and like I don't know like look down on I could like I can tell the ones that like look down on me because like. I'm um, on drugs or because I'm out here, so I judge them right back. Mm, yeah. Like, like, you're not perfect either. You yeah, like most of them have a wife at home. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And how you feel about the married men that, that's doing I this? I think it's safer dealing with them because they don't want no problems. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ever trust marriage knowing that you, you know, had dealt with a lot of married guys? Probably not. Probably not. No? No. Do they open up to you? Like, hey, I got a wife or... No, but you see the ring on their finger. And some so, of them do. Some of them. So you'll see the, the actual ring. So they'll Yeah, or like, or like them on. calling on the phone. Like, and they'll talk to their wife in front of you type of deal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, these guys are ruthless out here. <laughs> yeah. Early. Yeah. How about your relationship status? What's your relationship status? You got a boyfriend? What you got going on? Um, I have a boyfriend right now. Yeah. Is he getting high as well? Yeah. How you feel about your line of work, like prostituting and stuff? Um, I, I think, I mean, when we first like started started dating, I like he was able to support my habits, so I didn't have to date. But then he came home from jail, and now I'm the only source of in income. Oh man, so it's, it's, so the roles flipped basically. Yeah. So he's kind of like counting on you to go get this. Yeah. 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 It's like. That's hurtful, Harley. You know? Yeah. It's, Do you really love a guy or is it a, hey, you help me, I help you type of relationship? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? No. Loneliness, maybe? I think um, that. Um, if I wasn't on drugs, you or if, I, if he wasn't on drugs, we wouldn't be together. Uh -huh. If he didn't probably need my money, he probably wouldn't be with me. So basically using each other for, for the circumstances you both are in right now. Right. What type of guys did you deal with before the drugs got real bad? Good guys, uh, athletes, bad boys, uh, drug dealers? Um, I don't really know. I, I didn't really, was never really... Down, down like, yeah, I, I wasn't really, like, like, they didn't, like, I never really, like, slept around or anything like that. Okay. Like, he was really on your good, you know, good woman status. Yeah. Good grades, I, handling I, business and to. Yeah, I wasn't with, really interested in. And, and that's what's crazy, guys, like, um, addiction doesn't discriminate. Like, this can happen to anybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This can happen to that kid that sit, sit. In the front of the classroom, pay attention to class, get the straight A's. Mm -hmm. um, never have no nothing on them about getting in trouble or anything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this can happen to the, the knucklehead that's in the back of the class cracking the jokes yeah. too. Yeah, happen to anybody. Happen to anybody. 
So Hardy, mm -hmm. before we wrap it up, um, we already asked all the tough questions, Hardy. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your sign? Uh, I'm, I'm a Scorpio. Okay, when's your birthday? Uh, November 11th. So your birthday just passed? Yeah. yeah. Um, happy belated birthday, Hardy. Thank you. Fair food to eat? Um, sesame chicken. Okay. Chinese store or what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you like it with the white rice, with the yeah. lo, lo mein? Yeah. 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 But what, what was your hobbies before the streets took over, Harley? What was your hobbies? Um, I don't really, I kind of just, like, took, like, spent time with, like, my family, like, my, my child, and went to, like, tried to, like, keep up with my normal job. Yeah. Never really got into, like, hobbies. <laughs> Mm. You still got family by your corner, even though you're going through? Yeah. Okay, so whenever you're ready to get clean, they right there waiting mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. How often do you talk to your family members? Not as much as I should. Okay. Any kids, Harley? Yeah, I have a 12-year-old. A 12-year-old? So you was a parent young. Yeah. Very young. Yeah. How's your relationship with, you know, your 12-year-old? Um, right now, it's, like, non-existent. Yeah. Which is, like, not... Yeah. Yeah. This has never happened. You got, I'm not going to say get clean for your kid, but get clean for yourself and get clean for your kid as well. Yeah. You know, because you don't want him, her to fall in the same footsteps. Yeah. Harley, I'd like to thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. You've been very wonderful. Yeah. Um, I tell everybody this, it's not easy getting in front of a camera and having a conversation, especially a conversation like this. Mm -hmm. So um, I appreciate you for your time. Mm -hmm. um, like I said again, we give a voice out to the voiceless. My name is ATM Ray. Um, I wish you the best of luck and welcome to the All Time Media mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. We see you around. It's all mm -hmm. good vibes and love. Mm -hmm. We out. Peace. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face-to-face -face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.